Would you take just a moment and turn with me to the book of Psalm? And uh, in the 23rd Psalm, the most famous uh, probably of all the Psalms, for most of us, uh, it's one we've heard quite often and uh, just going to be um, uh, transparent to say that this isn't going to be um, a uh, typical sermon length, uh, not even going to be a typical devotion length. And uh, as we um, uh, we're thinking about what to do today. Obviously, Brother Neil Gillen was supposed to be in service with us, and um, I am a poor substitute for him, and and uh, wasn't really um, um, prepared mentally, um, hopefully prepared spiritually, but not prepared mentally to uh, be preaching today. And so just want to share just a quick thought with you, and then trust you'll take some time to talk about this with your family and, um, and allow the Lord to, to uh, guide you and your family uh, as you think about these things. So Psalm 23, we'll just read the whole psalm, but I just want to talk about verse 6. David says here, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As humans, we're pretty good at worrying about things in our lives that either come or don't come. I uh, heard it said one time, uh, Winston Churchill, in reflecting on a good friend of his, said that uh, the man once told him that he had a lot of problems in his life, most of them which never happened. Uh, and that's a true statement that we worry about things that never transpire. Uh, we, we spend our lives consumed with things that could go wrong, have gone wrong, um, we sometimes lose focus of the truth of what Psalms 23 reminds us of. And not to sound cliche or to try to explain away difficulties in life, but Psalm 23 reminds us that no matter what our circumstances are, that there is a good shepherd in heaven who is guiding us, who is directing us, who is there for us, who always has our best interest at heart. And as you read Psalm 23, uh, there's many things we could pull out. But like I said, I just want to focus on verse number 6, where, the, where David closes this psalm by saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just two reminders to give you from this passage. And that is, first of all, to remind you that goodness and mercy is always right behind you no matter what life may throw your way. It's a reminder that no matter where we are, that the goodness and the mercy of God is always chasing after us. We, we've been singing the song here, Zephyr Hills, for the last uh, few months. Uh, don't know exactly how old the song is, but it's a good song. They're reminding us that the goodness of God is running after us. Uh, that God's blessing is always there at every turn, that God is always orchestrating the events of our lives to uh, bring together His purpose, His will, His plan, uh, that, that He is always working things together for our good, as Romans 8 reminds us, uh, that, that God always has our best interest at heart, uh, that there are little glimpses every single day that we serve a good and a gracious God. He loves us. He cares about us. And He wants what's best for us in the sense that what is best for us is to know and to live for and to be passionate about the glory of God. He is concerned about His glory and He's concerned about us participating in the advancement of His glory. There's an old poem that was written called The Hound of Heaven and in that poem the uh, the author is, is bringing out the idea that no matter how far he tried to run from God, that God was always in pursuit of him and he could always hear the footsteps uh, of God chasing down after him. 
And I want to remind you this morning, uh, as you're sitting there and, and maybe looking out the window, hopefully at a, um, a, a, a nice white picture uh, of um, uh, changing of the landscape, that although you may not exactly like what's going on or know what's going on, you may have doubts, you may have fears, you may be dealing with grief and heartache and pain. Can I remind you to just open your ears, or if you prefer the analogy, to open your eyes and see the goodness of God that is chasing after you. That no matter how difficult your life may be, and even no matter how good you see it to be down the road, that God's goodness and mercy is chasing after you today. And God is, is uh, allowing that to be experienced on a daily basis. Surely goodness and mercy, the confidence of that statement, will follow us all the days of our lives. We never have to doubt that God's goodness is running after us. Then the final statement that he makes there, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't believe that David is necessarily making a statement about uh, the, the physical dwelling place of, of uh, where God resides. Uh, he is referring to the, the presence of God. And as believers, we understand that God is everywhere. Uh, there is nowhere that we can go that God is not. Uh, but it's also not only the, the present tense that we are dwelling in God's presence, that God is always there with us, uh, that God never will leave us or forsake us as the scripture has promised, but that we have the assurance that that is our reality for all of eternity, that we will dwell in God's presence, that we will be in his midst, that we will be experiencing the fullness of his glory. And that is a sustaining promise for you and I, that God's presence is ours forever, that, that we'll never have to be separated from Him, uh, that we can enjoy a relationship with Him now and for all of eternity. And I know that several of you are going through difficult times, especially. I know that all of us, whether life is better now than it has been, just are still living in the midst of a sinful and fallen world. We still have struggles and heartaches on a daily basis. We're still longing for when God will make all things right. Can I remind you that as the psalmist said, that we serve a good shepherd and that his goodness and mercy will never leave us and that we will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. I trust that that thought will be an encouragement to you this morning and a help. I trust that God's presence will be felt by you this morning in a very real way and that you can hear the hound of heaven chasing after you, that you can see his goodness and his mercy in your life today. Would you pray with me as we bow our heads and close our eyes for a closing prayer this morning? God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you that your goodness and grace is always chasing after us. God, we pray that um, as we... Um, uh, enjoy our time at home this morning. Lord, certainly desperately wishing that we could be together and longing and looking forward to the time we can be again. God, that we don't have to miss out on being in your presence today, that we can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you remind us that no matter how bad this life gets, God, that because we have you on our side, there's a glorious future, uh, but there can be a glorious present as we, we rest in the promises of God. For seeing your son's precious and holy name, we ask these things. Amen. Again, if you need anything this week, please don't hesitate to let us know. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night, Lord willing. Uh, if not then, uh, we'll see you next Sunday morning. Okay, have a blessed and a great day.